not necessarily the money. The money is just a tool. What's good, trappers? It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. And y'all know my goal is to help the culture build wealth one share at a time. And we back with another dope episode of Well Watching Wednesdays, right? So if you're new to the channel, man, do me a favor, like and subscribe, comment below, and just get in on this free game that we're going to talk about today. Now, as we always know, just an introduction, Well Watching Wednesdays is all about us understanding how the whales move. In case you don't know what a whale is, a whale is those super investors. You know, the Warren Buffett's, the Earl I the Carl Icons, the Bill Aikmans, the big institutions, the hedge funds, the banks, the, the 401ks, the mutual funds. Like these are the whales because they're buying 500,000 or more shares at a time. Now, they gotta be real secretive and selective with how they moving because they don't wanna kinda like tip their plays off, right? But they do have to report these plays. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the plays. Now, the idea is to see uh, if we see any familiarity with uh, certain investors. Now, we've seen how, if you look at other whale watching Wednesdays, I done had episodes where three whales, as we breaking down there, we see they all bought the same thing and sold the same thing. Right? And if we're looking at that, now we can understand, okay, this is why that stock price shifted. Uh, this is why the stock went up. This is why the stock went down. Right? Because what happens is if you pull it three, four hundred thousand shares, then he pulls three, four hundred thousand shares, she pulled three, four hundred thousand shares. What happens now is in buying those shares or selling those shares, stock prices go up and down. The thing for us as trappers is we focus on buying great businesses at amazing prices, right? So what happens is when the whales move out, we can double back and get in or buy more. Remember, we triple our network in a drought, you feel me? And, you know, so we're going to do that. And right now I got three dope, dope investors. And some of the things I like to do also is look at some of the stocks that we may not know of and put them out there, right? And so when I put them out there, you can be like, ah, I get it, right? And, and I just try to find, when I do that, I kind of try to find stocks that, that have value and a whole weight, right? So today we're going to mess with David Rofe. David Rofe of Wedgewood Partners, right? The company has 37 stocks in its portfolio um, with a portfolio value of $672,281,000. Right, and as I'm looking at the portfolio, I see he's doing a lot of selling. Right, did a lot of selling, but he made three big buys that I'm kind of interested in. Bristol Myers, ticket symbol BMY. We know they've been in a lot of things lately, um, especially with this vaccine and stuff stuff going on. That's been heavy on the list. Um, they've they've named been fluctuating a lot of things, um, and we just want to kind of understand. Uh, more about that, and so I was looking at that, and I was like, man, like, why, why did he get into Bristol Maya? Like, what did he see there? Um, and I just, and I always want to know that. Like, I'm that kind of person. Like, I want to know, like, what's, you know, what do you see there, right? So let's see. With Bristol Myers, he added 22 percent. Uh, it makes up 3.83 percent of his portfolio. I mean, have 536,807 shares. Uh, average price $48 a share. Um, with a portfolio value of $25,767,000. I'm not mad at that. I'm definitely not mad at that. Not being, oh, ticker symbol BMY. And that's one of the things I want to start doing now is also giving you all the ticker symbols, right? Want to give you all the ticker symbols behind that. And so let's see what else he's doing. What's good, Trappers? Welcome man. So what I want to do right now is introduce you to Trappers Anonymous. Trappers Anonymous is a dope community that we have of all like-minded investors. It's for those who are looking for a little more engagement, who want to get questions answered, who want to engage with me, the Trapper. This is my intermediate family, right? I really rock with the Trappers in this community real hard because Monday we have a day called Monday Madness. Tuesday we have 
Ticket symbol Tuesday, Wednesday, Wild Out Wednesdays, Thursday, ETF Thursday, Drip Fridays, and Say Something Sundays. It also comes with a weekly class every Sunday, and we do a live book club. So do me a favor, click that link below, and join Trappers Anonymous. We're giving it to you for the first seven days for $1, $1 only. And everything after that is $37 a month, only for the next 30 days, because if you don't get it now, the price is going up to $47, because we just add value. We want to just add as much value as we can to make you a better trapper, to help you build wealth one share at a time and turn your last name into an asset. Trap with me, now go kick the link and get out of here. See what else he's bought. Okay, so another thing we saw that he did was uh, AT&T. He bought 17% of AT&T, so it was 22% of Bristol's Myers and 17% of AT&T. Now, I'm not a fan of AT&T, even though I own it. I own about 22 shares of AT&T. I mean, 250 shares of AT&T for myself. My daughter owns about another 75 to 100 shares. Um, and I'm not really a fan of it. Um, they took on a lot of debt. The Warner partnership ain't going as planned. Um, ESPN is, is the mothership, but the money they make and it's not, you know, just there like that. Uh, the dividend is secure. Uh, just not a fan of AT&T. Uh, really not. But we see he added that, and he also, uh, so let's see he has, makes up 0.16%, which means not even 1%, uh, 37,000 shares, uh, average price $28 a share, uh, with a portfolio value of $1 million, $1,078, uh, which I'm, I mean, I don't know, I'm not a fan of it, not a fan of it at all. But he actually owns AT&T and Verizon. I wonder what that is. Right? Um, not really mad at the play at all. But he also bought some of uh, Kraft Heinz. Never, I haven't been a fan of Kraft Heinz in a while. Balance sheet is horrible. No growth in the business. Um, but he also bought... Uh, it's 0 0.03. So... It's it's just a it's just a walk in. It's not even much a position, really. It's, I call those little test of, test the tees of positions, right? But what's real interesting to me is he took some profit. So now if we notice that if we notice lately that the market has been like selling off, right? So the, the, especially in tech, right? And so as I look in this, I notice if we've noticed a, a pattern, a lot of people have been getting off. If we look at the last few weeks, we see that a lot of people, a lot of these big investors really been getting off of Amazon, Facebook, right? But as I look at this, I see he's gotten off Apple. We saw that Warren Buffett got off of app, some Apple too. And so, and this is how we start to put it together. We saw that Warren Buffett got off some Apple. Now we come here and that's his biggest position. We see that Apple is uh, David's biggest position at 8%. So it makes up 8% of his portfolio. He has 447,000 shares. He reduced 5% of it. He sold, he sold, the average price he sold off, that was 132. Makes up $59,422,000 in his portfolio. So if you think about what Warren Buffett sold, you think about what he sold, we now can understand why Apple price has been dipping because these are a lot of shares, right? And so now he also reduced his Stay in Facebook, and if you notice, Facebook, Facebook has been declining. He sold eight percent of Facebook, right? He sold a. a it makes up six point nine percent of his portfolio, but one hundred sixty nine thousand shares. Uh, sell price at two seventy three, uh, worth about forty six million dollars. Um, and as we dig a little deeper, we see he got all tractor supply. Now I'm kind of interested in that because. Industrials in the Dow has been moving, uh, but he sold uh, he sold twenty three percent of his stake in there. Uh, he still have five point three eight percent. Have two hundred and fifty seven thousand shares. Uh, he sold up at one forty, and the value is about thirty six million dollars. So not really mad at that. Those are some moves he's made. 
Uh, he also sold some other big ones he sold was Google and PayPal. And a lot of times what happens is when we see them selling, it doesn't necessarily mean they're getting out of the position. It could just mean they're taking profits. And there's nothing wrong with us saying, okay, look, I want to take profits, right? That's okay, but we shouldn't be taking profits if we only up 10%. You made $5. Why are you trying to take a profit? You made $50. Why are you trying to take a profit? Let it work for you. They've probably been holding these positions for so long, right? And the thing is, when you take profit, you're just taking some off the top. You're not taking out of the whole position, right? So what you're doing is, let's say you own 100 shares, right? You see it get up maybe 100, 200%. You say, I want to take some profit. I sell 20%. I still have 80% of that position, right? Let's say you get that 80%. You take that 20%, you put it somewhere else, you got 80%. It runs up a little more, it pulls back, you're cool. It runs up a little more, you take some from that 80%. You with me? You take from that 80%, now let's say you take 30%, now you got 50%. At this point, you got all your money back. You playing with the house money. Let that run. Let that run. All right. So next, this next dope investor we're going to look at is Daniel Lou with third point. Third point fund. Right? Uh, the thing about uh, Third Point, uh, I have this thing about their investment in perch. The firm was founded in 1995 by Daniel S. Lowe, who serves as CEO and oversees all investment activity. He has more than 27 years' experience in the financial markets with particular emphasis on special situation, equities, distressed debt, and risk arbitrage. Third point, employees are event-driven, value-orientated investment style. The firm seeks to identify situations where we anticipate a catalyst will be unlocked. We focus on delivering exceptional risk-adjusted returns with limited market exposure. Now, that is great to hear because what we get to do is understand the concept and the idea of how this fund is going at the market. I dropped a video called uh, Investment Identity, right? This is the fund's identity. It's giving us an idea on how this, how do they, how do they attack the market? We attack the market by looking for value-orientated investments. Value-orientated investments, right? The firm seeks to identify solutions where we anticipate a catalyst will be unlocked. So when you say a catalyst will be unlocked, they're looking at whatever's driving the stock, whatever's making the company good, they can, they're looking for somewhere that's unlocked, and I like it. I like it. They focus the emphasis on distressed debt. So companies with debt uh, that's distressed and risk, op so they can, they can, they, they find in companies that are great value a damaged stock. I'm dropping a video on a damaged stock and a damaged company. We love damaged stocks. Damaged companies, though, we look at them from a different point of view. It's like weighing the work wet. I see it's wet. You're trying to tax me. You're trying to get a couple more grams because it's wet. Stop playing with me. <laughs> right? So, um, the fund has 72 stocks in its portfolio, uh, $12 billion, uh, $12,971,188,000. Right? We see that they reduced the second biggest position is in Walt Disney. They reduced that by 9%, almost 10%. Uh, they still have 4.8 million shares at $181.18 was when they got off of those 10%. So it depends on at what point did they buy that um, to sell that 10%. Next is a portfolio value of about $869,664,000. Not bad. At all. Now, again, another one. We talked about this. 
We've been noticing that these big investors have been selling out tech. We see that tech has been getting beaten up. Here's an example. Amazon, he reduced about 29%. He reduced 29% of his position in Amazon, which makes up 3.64% of his portfolio, 145,000 shares. He sold it at $3,256. Hmm. Not bad. Portfolio value of $472,255,000. My question is now that we see, if we look at it, I've been like, yo, why they been selling out of this, right? But if we notice something, it's something I've always said, follow the banks. If we notice, we've seen a lot of these big investors do what on Well Watch and Wednesday? We've seen them sell out of tech. We've seen them sell Facebook. And we're not talking about little positions. We're talking about 8, 9, 10, 20%. Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix. We've been watching it. Because we will go right down here and look what he sold. Facebook. He reduced it by 3%. Uh... Got out at 273, it makes up 2.32% of his portfolio, has 1.1 million shares in his business. Still makes up $346 billion million of his portfolio. It's cool, but we see it. We see it. We looking at it, right? Another thing he sold was Alibaba. And I think a lot of people are going to look at Alibaba different with Jack Ma gone. Yeah. People believe in Jack Ma. So we'll just see how that works. Uh, Alibaba makes up 2.51% of his portfolio, has 1.4 million shares. He reduced 44%. That's almost half the position. Got out at 232, makes up 325,822,000. Uh, dollars. Now, if we go to some of his buys, I'm kind of like, yo, okay. One of his biggest buys was Intuit, you know, QuickBooks, right? You go to QuickBooks on your phone, that's Intuit. If you go to Mint, you don't heard of the Mint app, that's Intuit. Take a symbol I N T U. That's gonna be one of my stock spotlights. It's a great business. Uh, makes up 2.93% of his portfolio, has 1 million shares. He's added 233% to his position in Intuit at $379 a share. He own, it makes up $379 million. So wait a minute. This is a brand new position. This is a brand new position. Brand new. Like he didn't, this is a brand new position. Because he bought it for 300 so he bought a million shares of it. This is a brand new position. He, and here's why I know. He bought a million shares of it at $379.85. It's worth $379,850,000. That's a brand new position. Uh, We're going to write that down and watch him. We're going to see. Uh, that's crazy. Okay. But also we see, look, 198% Planet Fitness. It makes up 1.38% of his portfolio, 2.35 million shares, 2,305,900 shares of the business that he owned. Bought the average price at $77.63. Makes up $179 million of his portfolio. Planet Fitness, he looking at the reopening. I'm not mad. Tax time. I get it. I'm not mad. But this is what interested me, though. This was real interesting. This was real interesting. He added 14% to SHY. If you don't know what SHY is, the iShares 1 to 3 year treasury bond ETF. So he bought some treasury bonds. 14%. It makes up 0.04% of his portfolio. He has 55,000 shares. Makes up 80, he bought it at $86.38. Uh, 
uh, with a portfolio value of four point seven million, four million seven hundred fifty six thousand. Now I'm not mad at that because we understand as the market moves, tech sell off. People start looking for safer play. Interest rates came up, so bonds may be a little bit attractive. So that was kind of interesting when I saw that. I was like, okay, okay. He also sold Salesforce, so he sold Amazon, Bye Bye, and Salesforce. I was like, okay, I, I, I see what you're doing. And, and that's the thing, like, we just want to pay attention to what they're doing so we can see some of so we can see certain things, right? Lastly, man, we're going to bring up ACO Capital, A-K-O, ACO Capital, right? Uh, they have 26 stocks in their portfolio with a portfolio value of $7,756,897,000. Not bad at that at all. So, I, when looking at this, I see he kind of planned to reopen it, right? He just added, listen to this, 155% to bookings holdings. It now makes up 7.88% of his portfolio. It has 274,347 shares. Average price. $2,227. It makes up $611 million of his portfolio. Bookings holdings. I'm not mad at it. Right? But then I also see he adds 11% to Visa. Why? Because when you're going to book something, you're going to use your credit card. What credit card are you going to use? Seven times out of ten, it's a Visa. Unless you meet, because I use it in the American Express. Because they double and quadruple my points for travel and business. <laughs> right? Right? But he also um, added to Thermo Fisher. It's a reopening play. Look at it. Boeing, Bookings Holdings, Visa, and then Thermo Fisher. Thermo Fisher came out with something for the uh, vaccine. I think they did the kits. They came out with some kits. Right, so with Thermo Fisher, he added 21% to his portfolio. It makes up 3.18% of the portfolio. They add that 3.1% of the portfolio has 529,274 shares. Average price, 467. 465. Uh, portfolio value, 246,525,000. million five hundred and twenty-five thousand. I'm not mad at that. But also, he purchased an interesting company. So here's one of these interesting companies I talk about. Alcorn Inc. Ticket symbol, ALC. The company manufactures, distributes, and sells I products and solutions focusing on surgical repair and solutions. So they do a lot of stuff dealing with the eyes. You got to have laser surgery, contacts. Um, they deal with a lot of that. And that was interesting because he added 37%. They added 37%. Uh, it makes up 3.76% of his portfolio. 4,428,514 shares. Uh, average price $66.37 uh, with a portfolio value of $293,918,000. Not mad at that. Right? So I like those plays that he made. But he sold some interesting plays. He sold Ferrari. Ticket symbol race. R-A-A-C-E. He sold Ferrari. It makes up 4.32% of his portfolio. Right? With a value of one, he has 1.4 million shares, 1,455,218. He reduced 19.46%. Average price, $230. Portfolio value, $335,356,000. Also, he sold Marriott. So he went that way and then got out of Marriott. That's interesting. Uh... 
reduced 9.14%. Marriott makes up 3.31% of its portfolio, 1.9 million shares. 1.9 million shares. Average price of $131.92. Portfolio value, $256,802. i am not mad at that either. I'm not mad at you getting that Marriott. I'm not mad at you getting off Marriott or Under Armour. So you got off Under Armour, mix up 1.7%, reduced it by 25%, right? Reduced it by 25%, has 700 Six seven million six hundred sixty-six thousand five hundred thirty-six shares. Still a lot of shares. They reduced it by twenty-four percent. Average price seventeen dollars and seventeen cent. Portfolio value of a hundred and thirty-one million three hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars. I'm not mad at that. Buy into it. Bought Planet Fitness. Bought. I mean. Bought Bookings, bought Thermo Fisher, bought all kind, sold Marriott, sold Under Armour, sold Race. Listen, I hope this was very, 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 very informative for you all. We looked at some whales, three big whales. We saw how they moving. We saw some of the plays they made. Now we got to go do the homework. Relook at this video. Go do the homework. I need you to do a favor. Comment below. Like, subscribe, and share this, man. It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. Y'all know my goal is to help the culture build wealth one share at a time, man. Trap with me.